This is a question from AQA A-Level Chemistry. It's from paper three, and it's a required practical assessment question. This one focusing on RPA4. As always, I'm going to recommend you pause at this stage, work your way through this question on paper, and then review your answer so you know what's going well and what might need some development. So we have got here a question about some group seven compounds. Solid sodium chloride reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. We need an equation and we need the role of the sulfuric acid in that reaction. The equation is the same as for any solid sodium halide with sulfuric acid. NaBr, NaCl, NaI all begin in the same way. We take our solid sodium halide, we react it with sulfuric acid, and there is a displacement. One of the N, one of the H's is replaced with an Na to make NaHSO4 and HCl. So what is the sulfuric acid acting as here? Well, it's gone from H2SO4 to an HSO4 minus ion. So it's donated a proton. And if it's donated a proton, it's acting as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Let's move on to part B. We have got fumes of sulfur dioxide formed when sodium bromide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. So here, we actually need to think about the redox element of the reducing ability of the halides. We need an equation. We need another observation. So nothing to do with the sulfur dioxide. And we need to know the role of the sulfuric acid in this phase. Now, you will see lots of resources that almost guide you towards learning these equations. I'm always going to recommend learn the rules of redox, learn specific facts, and you can build the equations every single time. So to answer this question, you have to know that the Br- as a reducing agent is oxidized to Br2, and you need to know that that can only oxidize sulfuric acid as far as SO2. Once I've got that, I can build my half equations. And you can see here that I've done that by working through the rules. And you can also see that we can actually combine these. I've got two E minus on the left on the top one, two E minus on the bottom on the right one. I don't need to do any multiplying up to do the next phase. So I get this equation. H2SO4 plus 2HBr goes to SO2, 2H2O and Br2. For the observation, we can't talk about the SO2. So we're thinking about what key observation would I make from any of the other products? Water, colourless liquid, tells us nothing. But bromine, we're going to see brown fumes. That's what we needed at that stage. And then finally, the role of the sulfuric acid. Now, bear in mind that this content is generally taught as using it to investigate the reducing ability or trend in reducing ability of the halides. So we know that iodide is the best reducing agent, but we're asking you to reframe it in this question. If the halide ions are acting as reducing agents, they are themselves being oxidized. So the sulfuric acid is acting as an oxidizing agent. Let's move on to part C. We've got here chlorine reacting with hot aqueous sodium hydroxide, and we've got the equation for what's happening provided. What is the oxidation state of Cl in NaClO3, and what is it in NaCl? Now, I'm going to add a little bit more information. You don't necessarily need to do this, but there's no harm in sketching it out if you're not sure. We need to know that Na is plus one because it's in group one. We need to know that oxygen is, in, is minus two because it's not in a peroxide, and that's that's the rule. So my minus six and my plus one means the chlorine must be plus five. Second one is actually much more straightforward. We have got Na is plus one, so the Cl must be minus one. Now that's feeding in quite nicely to part D. State in terms of redox, what happens to chlorine in the reaction in part C. Well, we can see it's gone from zero, it's gone up to plus five in one species, it's gone down to minus one in another species. The name we give to that is disproportionation, and hopefully you're recognizing this equation as an example of disproportionation. But actually, you can recognize that it's, it's disproportionation because the chlorine is being both oxidized and reduced. For part E, we've got two different negative ions. We are in a test tube adding silver nitrate, then adding an excess of dilute nitric acid, and then an excess 
of conch ammonia. And we've got observations after each one. So we need to try to work out what each of these are. Now, if we take a look, we're making a cream precipitate of compound D. That cream precipitate is AGBR, and that takes us to the test for halide ions. And you can actually also see that the concentrated ammonia redissolves that later on. Now, in terms of what we're going to see with the remainder, when we are looking at the formula of compound E, what we're seeing here is silver carbonate, Ag2CO3. And the formula of F, this is a gas that is being produced when the nitric acid is added. We know that adding an acid is a test for carbonate ions, which is how we knew that E was a carbonate, but we are making carbon dioxide gas. There's a lot of steps you've got to work through backwards and forwards to be able to determine that it was Ag2CO3. The ionic equation to form E, well that's two Ag plus ions and a CO3 2 minus going to Ag2CO3. The equation to show the conversion of D into G, well what we've got here is AgBr and we're adding ammonia <clears throat> and that actually takes us to the complex AgNH32 plus and we get the Br minus taken out. Remember from the complex topic, the um, aqueous topic in year 13, that silver forms complexes with a coordination number of two, but also you'll hopefully recognize this complex from Tollens reagent as well. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.